are what you eat. And it turns out what you eat plays a pretty crucial role in preventing chronic health problems. 17 million people die every year from heart disease, and more than 400 million suffer from type 2 diabetes. But conditions like these can be prevented or reversed with the right diet and lifestyle. I'm Jo Colan in London, where I'm checking out a new device that's combining genetic testing with lifestyle monitoring to usher in a new era of DNA personalized shopping to make smarter choices. You're TK. Yeah. I'm hi. Joe. Hi. Yeah, Joe. Very nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. So TK, tell me what DNA Nudge is about. DNA Nudge is a DNA company, but then what's different between DNA Nudge with other DNA companies? We do DNA tests here. We don't send your sample to a laboratory. So everything happens here locally. Customer just come to the shop and do a one minute swap and their swap go into this uh, cartridge. So this cartridge is like a whole laboratory. So with everything processed automatically within this uh, cartridge and also within this nudge box. So for example, we put the DNA related to medical condition, for example, cholesterol, obesity, type 2 diabetes, hyperpressure. And in our cloud, we further relate this medical condition to all the food products in all supermarkets in the UK. So in the cloud, so you will get all the personalized recommendation based on your DNA. DNA Nudge is the brainchild of Imperial University's Regis Engineering professor, Chris Tumazu. Where did the idea come from for DNA Nudge? It's around the time that I came up with the way that you could sequence your DNA on these sorts of optical and electronic microchips. My son Marcus lost his kidneys through a renal predisposition, which was really unfortunate. Oh. He was around eight years old, and it was something that actually is still in my mind that, that you know, we couldn't have prevented it from happening. Okay. It was meant to happen. It was in his genetics. It was in his genes. He yeah. had a mutation for renal failure. Okay. However, we could have managed his lifestyle differently if we'd known about it. So what we then is your son okay? He's he's fine now. Good. He's on okay. his second kidney transplant. Okay. Um, and we're very lucky. So what we look for now is those errors in our genetic code. We differ by about 0.1 percent, and it's that 0.1 percent that differentiates us from whether we got propensities to genetic diseases, whether or not we can metabolize various foods, whether or not we can metabolize drugs, etc., etc. Okay. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to identify those errors. Those errors are called SNPs. They're single letter changes in our DNA. Single nucleotide polymorphisms is the sort of explanation for that. DNA is composed of nucleotides, which join together to form base pairs. Cytosine C goes with guanine G, adenine A goes with thymine T. But single nucleotide polymorphisms, or SNPs, occur when a letter in our DNA changes for another one. For example, where most people have a C, there is an A instead. If an error like this happens in a gene related to nutrition, it can cause health problems or intolerances. One of the key disciplines DNA Nudge had to master was headed by geneticist and co-founder Maria Carvella. So Maria, your role as a geneticist is key in DNA Nudge. Tell me about your work specifically. So first of all, what we did was go through all published literature, so every single clinical trial, every single study. The issue is that when you have so much research and so many biomarkers, we have now millions of biomarkers that people can test for. The issue is how you can find the biomarkers that they are the most robust, they are more significant, and also the ones that they are more representative amongst different populations, if you want to offer a universal test. So first of all, we had to get very good bioinformaticians in our team that they would go and scan all the published science. And that's a very difficult job because especially now we live in the era of um, deep learning and artificial um, intelligence, but there you need the human factor as well. So it was a process that took us a long time. 
And how do you go about identifying those biomarkers? In order to identify what you have specifically in your DNA, we need to make different templates. We call these templates primers and they are different molecules. So for each specific location in the DNA, we need to have a very specific primer that is going to be unique. These primers are made from short pieces of synthetic DNA, known as oligos. These oligos are designed to match up with SNPs associated with nutrition. Each well in the DNA cartridge contains a different oligo to match different nutritional SNPs. When this binding occurs, a fluorescent dye gives off light, which is photographed by the DNA nudge box, notifying that a SNP has been found in the sample DNA. And this chip here has 96 wells. So effectively, we've taken propensities for things like type 2 diabetes, obesity, hypertension. These are these genetic errors, you know, identified by SNPs. We then spread those across those wells. So once your DNA is then extracted from your saliva, your DNA is then spread over those wells. And once it's matched to a primer, we know that you've got that genetic propensity. If it doesn't match, you haven't got that propensity. So it's a process of matched and unmatched sequence, basically, on this, on this particular chip. And that's all done in situ in an area as small as this. This replaces an entire laboratory, replaces white coats, pipettes, machines, three or four weeks of lab time, the cost, the speed, everything is done, and more importantly, privacy. The fact is that because your genetic uh, sample, whether it's a cell or saliva, is actually within the device itself, once the test is done, this is thrown away. So TK, where do we start? So what you need to do is to do a cheese swap, so 30 seconds of each side. Okay. And then I will put your sample back to the cartridge. Okay. So I just do this for 30 seconds? Yeah. Okay. Is anyone timing me? <laughs> <laughs> this actually feels like a massage, it's quite nice. Okay, yep. so we have my DNA. Thank you. So I will put your sample inside this cartridge that already linked to your information. So your sample will remain here and then I close it. And this will be your DNA band. Okay. So I'm linking your DNA band to this cartridge as well by scanning a barcode. Right. So your cartridge will be put inside this nudge box and your DNA band also will be connected to the box. Okay. So how long does this process take, TK? So within 10 minutes, so your DNA will be extracted. And in parallel, all the major supermarket food products, barcodes, will be directly loaded to your DNA band. DNA Nudge is inspired by the work of Nobel Prize winning economist Richard Thaler. In essence, Nudge theory suggests offering things like rewards, praise and indirect suggestions are more effective ways of changing people's behaviour than education or enforcement. Tell me how Nudge theory and Nudge omics apply to what you're doing. For example, if you go to a tube station and you see a staircase next to escalators, there's an encouragement to go up the stairs. That's a way of improving health. What we're using is nudge theory slightly differently because we're using biology to nudge you. And it's those small changes over a particular length of time that then become sustainable. And that's effectively what we're trying to do. So this is the nerve wracking part, or this is the exciting part. It's processing. So you are, for example, for fat, you are high risk. So you need to be careful of fatty food. So salt? Salt also high as well. So you need to uh, be careful, not very high, but uh, you need to also be careful of salty food. The caffeine one is interesting. So I metabolize caffeine slowly. What does that mean? So that means your body cannot handle caffeine very well. Mm -hmm. So you need to be careful of coffee or like other caffeine food, uh, okay. drink, yeah. 
So we should probably have a look at it. So what do we have here? So for example, this veggie crisps. So what, do, what you need to do is just turn on your DNA band, press a button. Okay. And then it will trigger the scanner by the gesture, like you're reading your watch. So you're doing this gesture and then there's a scanning light coming and you just put across the barcode and it will show you the recommendation. Okay. So it looks as if this is a red product for me. For you, yeah. And the, the good news is I never eat chips. Okay. So I think we can safely say that I wouldn't be attracted to this product in the grocery store anyway. So we'll put those back. But I did notice that you have some chocolate down here. And I do tend to buy chocolate and eat chocolate. Yeah, let's try. I'd probably go for the 90% cocoa. So shall we okay. have a look? Yeah. Whether or not this is good for me. So sure. there's the barcode. Oh. It's showing red. red wow, red. that's surprising. I would have thought that 90% cocoa chocolate is actually pretty healthy. Mm. And I would tend to eat it for sure. Shall we have a look at the other one? Yeah, try the other one. Yeah. So let's try the mint dark chocolate, which probably has a higher cocoa content than the 90%. So scan that barcode. And that one's green. Oh, Whoa, what a surprise. <laughs> OK, yeah. who would have thought? So I'm OK with mint dark chocolate, but the healthiest 90% dark chocolate has to go. Mm. Or at least if I'm taking care of my DNA profile, this is probably not the best thing for me. Oh, let's see why it is good for you. So if I sync the app, so all the nutrients are okay. So the fat is 32 grams. And the other one, oh, it's because of the calorie, fat, and saturated fat. That's a whopping 30 grams lower in saturated fat. So you're just switching between these two chocolate. You will save 10 grams of uh, fat. That's surprising. Wow, it kind of makes me want to go shopping. <laughs> So we're not telling people actually to eat bananas instead of biscuits. We're saying, no, you can still eat the biscuits, but these are the better biscuits based upon your DNA and lifestyle. Small nudges over a period of time could actually save about two to three kilograms of sugar from my bloodstream without me even realizing it.